things that I want to work on for 2020 is getting organized. And specifically an area of my life I want to get organized is groceries or what I would consider my kitchen. So I decided to make a binder. And this is going to be my shopping binder. And I'm going to take you along in designing this binder and kind of what the process looks like of me getting organized with it. So the first step in creating this binder, well, was obviously getting the supplies, such as a binder, a um, pencil pouch, a calculator, and some pens. And then the first section, excuse me, that I wanted to create was a pantry inventory. And honestly, all I did was get on Pinterest and look up a sheet that I could print out. And it looks like this. So basically, you just write your item then you can mark the quantity that you have in your storage and then the date. And I did all of this on 1-4-20 of this year. And basically the way I, I did it once and I just went through and I did everything on two sheets. Like my freezer, my fridge, my cabinets, everything. And then I decided to go back and to break it down actually even further into freezer, fridge, uh, my can cabinet, bread and pop, and then house goods, diapers, and my baking and spices. So I did um, break it further down into smaller categories so that I wasn't always going through such a large list to check each time I used a product or an item. Um, and then I would be able to find it quicker to mark it out. So for instance, the other day I did this and I ended up using my bottom round roast. Well, I went back in, I marked it at first with a black pen and then I marked over it with orange showing that I had actually used that item. Now you can kind of tailor this, I think to your preference or what is going to work best for you. And for me, just breaking it down into these small categories is what was best for me at the time. Now, could I change this later? Absolutely, this is a what we're, we will consider a rough draft, per se. So my first step again was doing a pantry inventory, seeing what I already had in stock in my kitchen. So when I go to the store, I'm not over buying and overusing because I honestly was shocked at like uh, chicken broth, elbow macaroni, um, Oh, there was something else that, like, I was shocked that I had. Oh, like, gravy mix. How many of the, uh, the Italian dressing mix that I had? All these different things that I could have been using that I didn't realize I had because I hadn't been looking that deep into my cabinets and pantry. And so now I know what I have by using these pages to get organized. So then what I have next is my weekly meal planner. Again, this is something I just looked on Pinterest and found. And so this is the sheet that I am using. And why I like this is because it has the days of the week. And also per day, it's broken down into breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And for me, that's very handy because I do need to plan breakfast, not only for myself, but for the boys. And lunch for the boys. And then dinner for all of us. So in having this broken down, it was really easy to go in and decide, okay, for breakfast, we're going to have muffins and fruit. And then I'll rotate that down for lunch here's what we're gonna have and then for dinner here's what we're gonna have so having those three categories within each day was super handy for me in planning our weekly meals because I I've told my husband many times that when it's time to do groceries or wow sorry about the hair real life when it's time to plan groceries or get ready to go grocery shopping, I'm really good about dinner. I can think about what we're gonna eat seven days a week for dinner but then when it comes to lunch and breakfast it's like my brain's done. I'm tired. I don't want to think anymore. And those are usually the areas that I don't have enough food for. So by doing this, this is actually the meal plan that I created for last week. I'm filming this on a Friday, Thursday. What is today? Today is a Friday. So I did this on Sunday or Monday I think maybe Sunday and so basically on this side it gives you a spot where you can do your groceries and your notes so I just wrote down everything I needed for this list it was all in one spot and I put it on a clipboard that I actually keep in this binder so when I went into the store 
Ta-da! I had my grocery list and I put my coupons up here and I was ready to go. Now, after my weekly meal plan, I have what I created as my budget breakdown page. So, when I go to the store, or each week when I do groceries or bills, I should say, I have six categories that I break down um, outside of our bills. I don't include bills. I don't include um, any type of debt. This is purely um, expenditures, such as groceries or food, household items like toilet paper, paper towels, the boys' diapers, wipes, that kind of thing, gas or diesel, a personal column, a miscellaneous column, and a pet column because the dog does need pads, treats, food, all that kind of thing. So, this is a page that I actually created myself. Again, you want to find something that works for you. For this, I have tweaked this over the course of probably six months, and for now, this is what's working for me. So, basically, I write up here what the pay period is, and then I have each of my categories. Underneath the category title is where I write the total, what um, I can spend for that category total for the pay period. So then I'm able to go in, write the date, where the money was spent, how much I spent, and then the new balance from the total. So for instance, if groceries I only had $100, uh, today, Friday the 5th, I went to Kroger and I spent $60, then I would have $40 left. So that way I can keep a running total in each category of how much I'm spending. And then lastly in this notebook, I have this in the back where I keep my receipts for the pay period. So at the end, I can put it with my budget and then I have that to look back on for the year. And in the front, I have a different Ziploc bag or pencil pouch that has a calculator, some ink pens, and this is also where I keep any coupons. And the coupons I actually keep in like a three ring, not a three, hold on, I'll show you. So I keep my coupons in this, it's like a mini um, accordion folder, that's what it's called. And I have it categorized, uh, obviously CVS. Kroger, excuse me, that's where I shop the most. Food, as in like fast food or takeout, um, when they send us Penn Station coupons or Dairy Queen, anything like that. And then I have a spot for store coupons, um, which could be, I don't know, basically anything extra like um, Torrid, when they send you Hop Cash or Hope Cash or whatever. Anything, any type of store coupon goes back there. So I can also... If I need to, in a pinch, if I don't have this, keep my receipts in here. And then I also will keep my calculator in here. So then, all I have to do is, when I have my coupons, close this up. Which, I mean, it's pretty compact being such a little, small accordion folder. Stick it in my pencil pouch. Zip that up. And then, voila. Everything is ready to go in this binder. And I can take this with me uh, to the store. Like last week, I left this in the car, but I took this and the ink pen in with my coupon so I didn't have to carry the whole big thing. And then I was able to track what I'm spending. Now, I'll probably get better and better at this as time goes on. And maybe I won't need to take this gigantic binder with me every time. But for now, this is something that is working for me. So, like right now, I just found a Kroger uh, receipt, and this is from this week, so I'm going to flip to the back of my binder, I'm going to open up this pencil pouch, and I'm going to put my receipt right here. Let's look at this one. Here's a CVS receipt. What's the date? Do, 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 do. November 15th. Don't need that anymore. That can be thrown away. It, it helps you keep organized and on top of things. November 15th. November. Okay. Don't need those. Let's check this one out. This is from January. We want to definitely keep that receipt. And then, what are you? Yes, let's keep that receipt. All right. So, basically, also, by keeping these receipts, it helps me to go back and to track 
on my budget sheet what I've spent so I know how much I have left through the pay period. Because I do want to get better about my finances. I want to get better about my spending. And I'm not there yet. I'm absolutely not there yet. But I'm hoping that with the system in place, it'll help me to do so. So let me go ahead and show you how using this binder worked out this week when I went grocery shopping. I could honestly sit here and just take a nap. Oh my gosh, I have to get some caffeine or something. But I am at Kroger and I have my completed list with my grocery list on the side, my menu for the week, and any coupons that I have. So I want to try to stay at a hundred dollars. We'll see how that works because I also want to look at some stuff for me for lunch. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, Like, I always focus so much on the kids' lunches. Shh, can't talk. I focus so much on the kids' breakfast and lunches and our dinners for every night that, like, by the time it comes to me, I haven't thought about me for breakfast or lunch. So, I'm going to try to find some stuff. I want to cut down on my sugar and my carbs. Um, I, I can't go cold turkey, but I want to be smarter in my choices. Um, so, maybe try to find, I don't know. I don't even know but anyway let's get this over with okay so here's hoping my phone doesn't fall down um, so I just got done with Kroger and I'm trying to get a little bit organized here 
So my goal at Kroger was to spend a hundred dollars and I ended up spending a hundred and twenty. So that's not horrible because I did deviate from the grocery list a little bit because when I went in I didn't have any plans for me as far as lunches or breakfast or anything and so I did find a couple of things which I'll show you when I get home when I do a grocery haul um, I there was a couple things and I know it was more because I bought like little sizes of things or individually wrapped things but they were on sale and I wanted to try that versus buying a whole box of something and wasting it and so this way I got to like I bought these burritos that were high in protein low in sugar well I got three different kinds versus buying one box of one kind that ultimately would have been cheaper per ounce you know you know how that goes but I wanted to do this so I could get um kind of sample it so that did rack up the price a little bit so basically I did spend about $20 more I got me some protein bars some different types of oatmeal, uh, two breakfast English muffin things to try and three burrito things to try so that was my $20 overage and then I got gas and I got 50 cents off which was exciting all right so starting out I was able to find some of these oatmeal cups they are by Kodiak Cakes. They were three for five. I haven't tried them before, but again, I am kind of buying some things to see what kind of things I actually do want to eat. So I'm not always eating the same thing or not eating anything at all for breakfast and just skipping and waiting till lunch or snacking on chocolate or things that aren't going to do me any good for the day. These three, I actually have ate all three of these and they were so good. Um, the turkey sausage one was my favorite. The steak and cheddar was definitely in second place. They were really yummy and seemed to fill me up. I grabbed some turkey pepperoni and some fruit and vegetables for the kids. Some little things of macaroni, some olives. Oh, I forgot also I was able to grab some English muffins to try for breakfast. Got some more of my packets for my water. Some peanut butter some applesauce, some protein muffin mix. This was delicious. I added some chocolate chips and it was really good. Some Honey Nut Cheerios, Chips Ahoy's, some bananas of course. Cannot go without bananas, strawberries, some graham crackers, some Safe Catch tuna, and I think the other one was salmon and one was tuna if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So far, I've had the tuna, which was delicious. Haven't had the salmon just yet. So, a can of tuna, mushrooms, turkey hot dogs, just a couple pizzas on standby, some pepperoncinis for a roast that we're going to make, and then the husband wanted some snack cakes, some ginger ale for another recipe, got the boys some chicken nuggets for the week, and this brand I have been using for a long time, and they seem to love it. Cheese sticks, heavy cream, granola in the back, some more milk, pretzels, and then my favorite, the honey wheat. These protein bars, which I love the Kroger brand. I've had it from Aldi's, and the Aldi one was almost too chalky. Some more yogurt, eggs, chicken for the wheat that I'll divide up into two meals. The husband wanted some more tea, and cannot forget our creamer. So this was what I was able to get for the week and it was again $120. My budget was $100, but the $20 over was basically like the salmon that you see there, the um, oatmeal that I showed you at first, and those three burritos um, really did kind of, oh and the olives weren't on my list originally, put me over, but I feel like for my first go this wasn't too bad. So that was my first go around using my new organized shopping binder. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if I can find links to the pages that I have in my specific binder from Pinterest, I'll link them below. Again, find something that works for you. This system works for me right now, but I may end up tweaking it in a couple weeks or a month. So I'll definitely keep you updated. Um, maybe I'll do this again in February. Um, showing you what it looked like start from the beginning to the end of the process me using the binder making doing the inventory making the uh, list checking my budget going to the store and showing you my haul I hope you'll like this video subscribe and I'll see you next time bye bye